I believe you, I'm just saying. It was bad, Chad. It was, it was bad. I hear you. But you're not listening to me. It was so no, bad. You're not to me. I'm trying to tell you I had a pretty bad time myself. No, there's no way. It was pretty bad, Randy. Really? Yeah. Okay, go. She, she said she didn't like the way I smelled. What? Sally told me she didn't like the way I smelled. Never has. Sally Dunlavey told you that she didn't like. Yup. When? When I picked her up. She got in the truck, we're backing out of her driveway. All of a sudden, she starts breathing hard. And she asks me to stop the truck. She gets out. She says she's really sorry, but she can't go out with me because she doesn't like the way I smell. Never has. What? So she thought she was going to be able to overlook it the way that I smelled, but that that wasn't even possible after all. She slammed the door on me and let me sit with her in the driveway. Because she didn't like the way you smelled. Yup. Hmm. Well, what kind of. I don't mind the way you smell. Thanks. Jeez. Yeah, told you it was bad. That's more than bad, Chad. That is sad. Yup. So I'm guessing I'm the big winner tonight, huh? So I gotta pick tomorrow and I pick bowling. We'll go bowling, separate the snowmobile club, you know, a couple of coats and then we'll play. Yep. I didn't say you're the big winner. What? Did I say you're the big winner? No. No. You didn't win, Chad. All that's pretty sad. What do you mean? You didn't win. You can beat being told that you smell bad. Yeah. Okay, go. Mine's face broke. What? His face broke. His Only get one chance with a guy like Darren LaFrance, and his face broke. How did his face break? When we were dancing. Dancing? Yeah, he took me dancing down at the rec center. Why were you dancing? Because that's what he wanted to do. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah, it is pretty nice. Maybe you should try to take a girl dancing sometime. Why? Why? What was anyway, that? shut up. You go, and you pay, and you get a lesson, and you dance all night. They teach you together dancing, how to dance together. And they try to teach us that thing. You take the girl, and you throw her up and over. And well, Darren was having a hard time figuring out his part, and it was so easy. So I thought I could help him if once through we switched. And well, Darren's pretty small, you know. He is, isn't he? Yeah, and I'm pretty strong, and he's just so small. He really is, isn't he? Yeah, so we switched, and I went to throw him up and over, and I threw him over, over. <laughs> and he lands on his face, and it broke. Chad, I think you're that, but what, uh, 
uh, what happened? No, no, I think I just fell in love with you. Chad! <laughs> yep, that's what that was. Really falling in love with you. Would you cut that out? Can you get up, Chad? Can you just get up? Oh. Chad! I don't quite know what you're thinking or what you're going on about, but what the heck are you doing? What the heck is your problem? Chad, I'm your best buddy in the whole world. She's a crow. And that's something you don't mess with. And you mess with it. And let me tell you something else. You're about the only thing that feels really good and makes sense in the world to me, too. But then you go foul it up by doing this and telling me that. And now, it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't feel good. You've done a real number on a good thing here, buddy. Because there's a line in your friends that you can't cross. And you crossed it.
See, I knew you were mad. I'm not mad, Phil. You're mad at me, and pretty soon, out of nowhere, it's gonna get I'm out. not mad, I'm... Of course, I'm sorry. I know I missed some things, but I gotta take a double and chat easy at the middle. He's helping me. Us out, you know. I'm I know, I know. No, you don't know. Me working is for us. And the kids. And it's a lot sometimes. And it messes me up. I'm not mad about you working, Phil. You gotta work. I understand that. What I don't understand is why I'm lonely, Phil. I got a husband, a couple of great kids, and I'm lonely. You just, you don't pay attention. You go away, and you go somewhere where you don't pay attention, and you miss your son's first varsity hockey game. You forget his birthday, and you forget your anniversary, Phil. I mean, I brought you here hoping you remember about us, but you did it, and that makes me so mad, I just don't know what to do anymore! You lie. What? You lie so bad. What? You're mad at me, but you don't tell me, even when I Because ask you wouldn't pay attention if no. I did tell you! No, no, because you won't tell me how you feel about me, so I don't know where I am, where I stand. Maybe that's why I go away, so I can know where I am for a second. And it's lonely there, too, where I go. And you said it. You went away a long time before I did. And now all you do is lie. Oh, I don't lie. Yes, you do. You say you're not mad, but you're mad. You say you had fun, but you did. You didn't have fun tonight, did you? No, I didn't. You kept saying you did. I didn't. I don't have fun with you anymore, Phil. <laughs> did you? No. I have a lot of time. Well done. What are we doing? What are we waiting for? Small towns don't know each other any better than people in big towns. 
you know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know, and just like anywhere else. Again, sorry to bother you, just, uh, when his parents died, he kept the house I heard. He lived here. He stayed here. I thought he was one of the ones who stayed. I didn't stay. I went away. Most people do. Yeah, and um, guess he did too. I must have lost track. You gotta keep track of people or you'll lose them. Wish there was something you could keep them in for when you need them. Oh look, there he is! Perfect! <laughs> Boy, it's cold. I forgot. Yeah. You know, I can't believe I took a taxi here from Bangor to see him. That's far? Yeah. That's 163 miles. This place is a little farther from things than I remember. Why did you do that? Well, I can only fly as close as Bangor, and I needed to get to him as fast as I could. Why? I need to answer a question he asked me. Oh. Yeah, the last time I saw him, he asked me like a very important question, and I didn't answer it, and that's just not a very nice thing to do to a person. Well, that's being a little hard on yourself, don't you think? He asked me to marry him. Oh. Yeah. And you? Didn't answer him, no. I mean, I didn't have an answer at the time. I was going off to college, and the night before, I'm going to go into the world to do what I hope and dream. He asks, will you marry me? I mean, come on, what was I supposed to do? I don't know. I told him I'd have to think about it, that I'd think it overnight and be back when the sun came up with an answer. And then I left him standing right there. And I didn't make it back when the sun came up. Or at all. Well. That sounds like an answer to me. No, it wasn't my answer. I just went off into the world, and, and that's not an answer. And I think... What? I think he thought that I would say yes. Well, the guy's probably not going to ask a girl that question unless he thinks she's going to say yes. I know, but I'm afraid he probably waited up all night for me, and I want to tell him that I know now that you can't just do a thing like not answer a question like the one he asked me. You can't do it to a person, especially to someone that you love. Him? Well, I don't know. I mean, we were kids. Yes, I did. I, I do. I feel like I dashed his hopes and dreams. Come on. You give yourself too much credit. He was young. That's all you need to get your hopes dashed. Just be young. And everybody starts out young. So, everybody gets their hopes dashed. And besides, I don't really think you dashed his hopes. Because if you dash somebody's hopes, well, that's kind of a nice way to let him down. Because it hurts, but it's quick. Now, if you'd have said no, that would have been dashing his hope. But you didn't say no. You just said nothing. At all. You just didn't answer him. And that's killing hope the long, slow, painful way. Because it's still there, just hanging on. It never really goes away. It's like giving someone a little less air to breathe every day, till they die. Well, thank you. For what? I don't know. Goodbye, Hope. Goodbye. Look, I'm just so sorry to bother you. I really didn't mean it. I was just out alone. I realized what I'd done to Danny. What? I'm sorry. You called me Hope. How do you know my name? Danny? Hello, Hope. Danny, I do. I didn't I recognize know. You're so I know. small. Yeah. I uh, lost a lot of hope. That'll do a number on you. Danny, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Because you know something? You're early. What? You're early. You said that you'd be back with an answer to my question before the sun came up. And geez, I'm crow, the sun's not even close to being up yet. Look how early you are. That's good of you. So. Taxi all the way from Bangor. Yep. To tell me. Honey, Dan, Han, who's there? Just somebody who needs directions. It's awful late for directions. Yeah, Suzette, listen. 
I'll be right in. Okay. I... What? I hope you find it, Bolt. Your place in this world. Bye. Goodbye, Danny. Yes. Yes. Get out of here! 
When? You know, when they're talking, they say that you're a little hung up there, and I gotta be a little persistent there. Who says that? Suzette. Suzette. Yeah, yeah. Suzette and then Harding say that I'm a little hung up there, and you have to be a little persistent there. Yeah, I'm not well, and for India Chad, and Marcy, and Jimmy, and Sandrine, and, and East. That's just the name of you. Why would they say something like that? I, I love those guys. I'm, I'm good to those guys. That's talking about me, and that's mean. Well, I don't think they're saying it to be mean, Rhonda. I think they're saying that to me about you, to warn me about what I'm getting myself into. Because they like you and me, us. They, they're rooting for us, Rhonda. Who's rooting for us? Everybody. Lendl, and Gail, and Marcy, and Sandrine, and well, they never told me that they're rooting for us. Well, that's because you're a little hung up there, Rhonda. So I didn't mean to make you mad. I just told you I love you. Why not say that? It's a polite thing to do. I don't know how. What? I don't know how. I've never been in love What do you mean? I went arm wrestling at the Winter Carnival from fifth grade on, and I worked at Plywood at Bush and Lumberville. And that's not what most men wanna want. Well, now, who says that? From everybody. Everybody. Well, I gotta tell you, Rhonda, I see a lot of guys taking good, long looks at you. What do you say you've never heard? No. Well, guys, I think that's kind of neat. How about you try saying it? I won't make fun of you or anything. No, let's look at this. Is there apples, cherries, big open face strawberry rubber pie?
their professionalism, their dedication, and their just joy to be around. And watching them grow into the wonderful young ladies that they are at graduation is just a couple of months. So I just